In this video, we're going to walk through adding elements to a binary search tree. Now, as a reminder, to add elements to a binary search tree, the first thing you add will always be the root. Then, smaller elements will go in the left subtree, larger elements will go in the right subtree, and that holds anywhere inside the binary search tree. So let's see an example. We're going to add 756938 to a binary search tree. And again, the order does make a difference, and we'll see that once we're done here. So the first element is 7. That'll be our root. Next, we'll add a 5, which is smaller than 7, so it'll go in the left subtree of 7. The next element we add will be 6. 6 is smaller than 7, so it's going to go in 7's left subtree, and it's larger than 5, so it'll go in the right subtree of 5. 9 is greater than 7, so we'll add it in the right subtree of 7. 3 is smaller than 7, so it goes in the left subtree of 7, and it goes in the left subtree of 5. And then finally, we add 8. 8 is larger than 7, so it goes in its right subtree, but it's smaller than 9, so it goes in 9's left subtree. So now we've completed our binary search tree. Now, as we said before, the shape is determined by the original order in which we add the elements. So before we saw the elements added 7, 5, 6, 9, 3, 8. However, if we added the same exact elements, but in a different order, we would have a binary search tree that had a different shape. And this is potentially a problem if you have a binary search tree that's not balanced, and that's something that you can remedy with techniques such as rotation, which is covered in a later video. So let's see another example. Here we're adding LTGRVWKAH to a binary search tree. The root will always be the first element, which in this case is L. Then T comes after L in the alphabet, so it's going to be in the right subtree. G comes before L, so it'll be in the left subtree. R is after L but before T, so it'll be in T's left subtree. V comes after L after T, so it'll be in the right subtree of T. W comes after L, so it'll be in the right subtree after T. It'll be in the right subtree after V, so it'll be in V's right subtree. K comes before L, so it'll be in the left subtree, and it comes after G, so we'll put it in G's right subtree. You'll notice each time we're adding elements, they're always added as a leaf. A is the first letter of the alphabet, so it'll be as far to the right as we can go, because there's nothing that comes before it. And then finally, H, since it comes before L, but after G, but before K, so it'll be an L's left subtree, G's right subtree, and K's left subtree, because again, it comes before K. So now we're done, we've added these elements. As a reminder of why binary search trees are useful, now that we've added everything to our binary search tree, we can do an in-order traversal and we'll get the elements in order. So here, let's stretch these out and let's sort of compress them down. And you'll notice we have a sorted list of the elements that we added to our binary search tree. So to review, when you're adding elements to a binary search tree, the first element will always be the root, and then add smaller elements to the left subtree, larger elements to the right subtree, and when you're adding to a subtree, the same rules apply. So you would go left and right based on whether it's smaller or greater than what you're looking at. 